Sega. Sega Bass Fishing is a fishing themed arcade game from 1998 developed by Sega for their Model 3 arcade hardware. It was later ported to the Dreamcast where it gained a measure of fame and ridicule due to support of a fishing rod peripheral allowing players to mimic casting and reeling motions as they played. As bizarre as it seems the game was popular enough to receive a sequel, a spin-off in Sega Marine Fishing and more recently an enhanced remake for Nintendo Wii. There were also faithful ports of the Dreamcast version released for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and PC. It's this Xbox 360 version that we'll be playing in this video, paying particular attention to the arcade mode. There is also an additional original mode which was put in the home versions. We'll talk a little bit about that later, but that's not going to be the focus of the video. So without any further ado, let's get going. Welcome to Lay Paradise, select an area. You have a choice of which area you want to start at. We're just going to pick the lodge because that's the default lodge option. Area. As you can see at the lodge we need to get 11 pounds of bass before we can move on to the next area. That shouldn't be too hard for us. And the game gets pretty hard in the second and third areas but it starts off fairly gentle. Select the lure. So first we're going to pick our lure. We're going to take the deep crank because that's a, a generally good one to, to use in most situations. My go-to area here is to, to go over to the left hand side and knock the lure off that pier over there, making a little plop. Now I'm going to drag the lure across the bottom of the lake to try and attract the fish. fish. So we've got our first one and the four second hit bonus tells us that it's kind of in the middle when it comes to the size. We don't really have to worry about the line tension too much on a fish this size, it's probably not going to break it. So you can just reel as hard as you want. And here it is. Four pounds and fourteen ounces. That's not a bad start. But I'm going to go back to the same place because I didn't quite get what I was looking for. So with the crank you want to reel it so it dives down to the bottom and scrapes across obstacles. Then let it put up a bit and start reeling again. Now this is what I came for. There's usually a really big fish or two around this side of the lake. Not always, but usually. Six seconds tells us it's going to be within the biggest weight category. Not at the top end, but certainly big enough to get us through to the next area. This one's and there we have it, 10 pounds, 12 ounces. Not the biggest fish we're going to catch, but it's more than enough. Next area. Cape area. Before we move on to the next area, Let's just have a little think about some of the things we've seen so far. We've used one lure, the deep crank. This is a lure that floats and when you start reeling, dives down under the water. It's most effective when you drag it across underwater obstacles. Both the fish that we caught in the lodge were over by the left hand side. But you can catch fish in a number of other places too. There's some shallow water over at the far side. If you want to cast here, it's a good idea to use surface lures, or a minnow. Or you can just try anywhere between the two piers. I prefer to use a lure like the spinner or the vibration lure, because these sink in the slightly deeper water. Either way, the lodge has enough variety of water depths and obstacles for you to adopt almost any playstyle in this area. If you start your game at the cape area, you'll do the lodge last. Which sometimes can be a good idea, because the frequency of catching larger fish over by the left hand side means it's a, a good way to get the 15 pound target that you need. Now that's out of the way, let's move on to the cape. We need 13 pounds of bass in one minute this time. Enjoy your fishing. Select the lure. It's sunny at the cape right now, and bass don't like direct sunlight a great deal. So we're going to try and fish in the shade. I picked the vibration lure because the water here is quite deep and this lure sinks rather quickly. Looks like our strategy is paying off. We've been rewarded with a fish almost straight away. Four seconds tells us this is going to be of a reasonable size. The cape's quite a big area so it takes a long time to reel things in so you need to make sure that you're catching as big a fish as possible. You can't do this on numbers alone. Oh, a big one! Five pounds is a pretty good start. Looks like we'll be able to get this in two, maybe three fish. 
there were still some shadows over here, so I thought I'd try the same area again. And we've got lucky twice in a row. It's still not the Whopper that we're looking for, but this should add nicely to our total. So that fish takes us up to just over £10. That's not a bad effort. One more fish and we should be able to do this. There's another shaded area over here that I sometimes find success with as well. I find using the deep crank here works because there's some rocks just under the surface that you can scrape it along. It's coming near. Looks like we've attracted the attention of a big fish this time. If we can reel this in in time, we should easily be able to beat the target. Of course, the danger with these fish is that you'll reel too hard and lose them, and that can be really frustrating in the last few seconds of a round. This time we had nothing to worry about though. We managed to land it, and it's £12, almost enough to hit the target by itself. Go to next area. Inlet area. Now the cape's out of the way, we've got a couple of other things to talk about. We used a new lure in that last round, the vibration lure. This is a lure that you use by reeling constantly to keep it at the same depth. If you stop reeling, it'll sink. This means it can be used in almost any depth of water, so long as you can keep reeling at the correct rate. The spinner bait also works in a similar fashion. We also unlocked a special lure, the Suspend Minnow. Minnow lures work by mimicking the small fish that the bass like to eat. You start the game with a minnow already in your tackle box, the floating minnow. You can use this lure very much like a crank lure by reeling irregularly and twitching the rod around. The minnow lures work best in shallow water. The Suspend Minnow is a special version that doesn't float back up to the surface when you stop reeling. Once you stop reeling, it stays about the same depth. This means it's a great thing to dangle in front of particular fish that you wish to target. It's quite a difficult lure to use, but it can be very effective. Now we're going to go to the inlet. This time we need to get 15 pounds of bass. There's no shortage of fish here, but it can be hard finding the ones you want to catch. Select the lure. Now at this point I thought I'd do something really stupid and take the pencil bait over to the right hand side in the hope of catching something feeding near the surface. As you can see there's a lot of shadows of bass down there but what we ended up with really wasn't worth the time it took to cast out and to reel it back in again. The two second hit bonus there isn't a good sign. One. This little tiddly here nearly cost us the entire run. After this though, I thought I'd try something a little bit safer. There's a lot of underwater obstacles in the inlet, so using the deep crank to scrape across them is a good idea. And this time it's paid off. Hopefully this one will make up for the little tiny fish we got just before. Time's very short in the third round, so you really need to make sure you can reel things in as fast as possible. This one's huge. After catching this fish, things are starting to look up a little bit. If we're lucky, we can get one more fish that'll take us over the limit. This again is another two second bonus, so it's probably not going to be the winner. We're going to have to catch something else after this as well. Okay, an average size. It's not as bad as the first fish we caught, but it's not what we want. I'm bonus. Now with any luck, if we can get one on the hook straight away, we should be able to finish this one off. There was a big one in the distance, but... Right now, it doesn't matter, we just need to get anything we can. Not an impressive fish, but it does the job. 
on to the final area. Go to next area. The palace. Before we reach the thrilling climax of Sega Bass Fishing, we've just got a, a couple more things to go over. Again, we use the new lure in this round, the pencil bait. That's a, a topwater lure. This means it sits on the top of the water and tries to attract the bass that are near the surface. I don't use them very often in arcade mode. I tend to use them more in the original mode where you have a better variety of water conditions and weather. So the pencil bait sits on top of the water and you attract the fish by twitching it around. We also unlocked another top water lure in this round, the popper. This works very similar to the pencil bait, but it's better than it in just about every way. As soon as you get the popper, you might as well throw the pencil bait in the bin. You're never going to use it again. In this run, I made quite short casts on the inlet. But, if you're feeling more adventurous, try casting down the middle of the inlets. There's some quite deep water there, and you can often find some very big fish if you're willing to risk a long reeling in time. You'll need a lure that sinks, of course, like the vibration lure or the spinner. Looks like there's only one thing left to do. Go to the palace. The palace is the final area in the arcade mode. You have one goal here, and that is just to catch a fish. All the fish in the palace are huge. Enjoy your fishing. As you can see, it's very dark. And we can't see the shadows of any fish. The water here is very dark and murky, so you don't know what you're going to find until you cast off. I always pick a lure that sinks, because some of the water here gets quite deep. We've been lucky here, in that we have landed it right in front of a fish. Sometimes you can cast off there and not find anything. And with casting distances that long, that can be a problem. Of course, if you do find one, you then have the problem of bringing it back to the boat. Once you've caught a fish, you really only have time to reel one in. So if the line breaks, that's it, you've pretty much lost. But these fish are all so big and the time limit's so short, you've got to push it to the very limit of the line tension. This time we've succeeded, but in order to get this far, I had to do a lot of failed runs. Some of them even failed on this final stage. This one's huge. At this point, the weight doesn't really matter. We've caught the giant fish, we've won the game. Terrific! You've cleared all the areas! That last bass we caught then was the biggest we found. I think the biggest you can get is about 20 pounds or something. Uh, I think my biggest is maybe 19 or so. Please enter your name. Anyway, while all this is going on, I'll just explain briefly about the original mode. The home console versions of this game have a career mode with them, where you go to various fishing tournaments and try to win them. It's different from the arcade mode, and you don't have quite so the same tight time limits, you have a few more different weather conditions, and you've got all the lures available from the start. I thought I would make a video of arcade mode, however, because it's much shorter, and I think it's a much more exciting and fun game to play. Originally, it's more of a laid-back, relaxing game. And speaking of laid-back and relaxing, we'll close the video now with the credits music, which I think makes a nice counterpoint to the excitement of the palace. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll make some more videos in the future. Thank you for playing.